What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Master Drum Whiskey Room on this special Wednesday afternoon live stream. Today, we have the one and only Jackie Zykin, Master Taster at Old Forester. Uh, she just released something pretty special at Old Forester just today. Uh, we already found out that people were lining up at three in the morning for this stuff. So uh, I don't know uh, how it's going now, but I'm sure a lot of people will really love this one. Uh, it's a special bottle, not only for the distillery, but also for Jackie personally. Uh, so without further ado, let's bring in Old Forester Master Taster, Jackie Zykin. Jackie. Hi. Hello again. Hello. <laughs> How you doing? I am doing great. I am beaming. Today has been incredible. Yesterday was incredible. It's an amazing week for us at Old Forester. Um, and selfishly for me, um, uh, I just... I can't believe that people actually came out at 3 a.m. to buy the stuff. I, I can't. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't well, know. I mean, they, they, do it for they do it for birthday bourbon. Why wouldn't they do it for this? Right. But like, is this birthday bourbon? I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It's very, today has been very much a pinch me kind of day. Yeah. Um, very excited. And yes, for anybody watching, they are releasing it out of the Old Forester Distillery. Today was day one. Uh, I believe the line outside started at 3 a.m. Um, they started actually selling the tickets. So you got to get a ticket. Max bottles you can purchase is four, and it's a 375. Keep that in mind. Um, and they only do 100 tickets a day. So they started selling tickets at 8 o'clock, and all the tickets were spoken for at 8.05. So I'm not saying go sit outside at 3 a.m. Um, especially <laughs> in this COVID world we're living in, you know. Um, but I am saying that there's more. That's the beauty of it is that, like, it wasn't just today. They're selling 100 tickets at a time until they're out of it. So there's still chances to get it through the weekend. But I wouldn't wait after that too much further if you want it. Yes. Yeah. So for availability, yeah, for, for availability, guys, this will be available at the distillery uh, in Louisville, uh, in downtown on Whiskey Row. There will have there will be some Kentucky retailers that also get some bottles as well. Uh, so if you're in Kentucky and local to Kentucky or know someone in Kentucky and really want a bottle, start work, start working, start working the calls, working the phones <laughs> if you want to get one. Yes. And the beauty of this series is that let the name series imply that it was not just this one and done thing. There will definitely be more. So even if you miss out this time, you know, maybe yeah. go around is your, is your lucky day. So, so before we get into all that, I want to say to hide a couple people in the chat. Uh, I want to shout out my buddy Cheech Artelino. It's his birthday today. So happy birthday. Oh, happy Cheech. birthday, Cheech. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We love Cheech. He's uh, he's forever in the chat. Always, uh, you know, talking, uh, talking to everyone. So uh, happy birthday, buddy. Um, but before we get into the whole, um, you know, the release and the excitement and everything it means, I mean, how have you been? I mean, you were on the show last time in June. What's been yeah. going on with you in the world of, uh, I guess, life and, uh, and COVID? <laughs> um, so still talking to you from my house, you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> we have adapted to this COVID life. Um, I have basically been working from home. With I go into the warehouses, obviously, and I go into the distillery. Um, but I try to really be efficient with the way I schedule those so that I'm not in and out. Um, I am not a person that sits still very well. I'm yeah. still going about everywhere and I just want to make sure that like, I'm not abusing the fact that I can go into the distillery and putting our production folks at risk. I'm not just going to go in there to like have lunch. Like, no. Um, so, but everything is good. The brand is, is good and everything is just fine and dandy and all cheech. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, it's your birthday. I feel like we should be drinking birthday bourbon. Uh, you want to you want to start with birthday bourbon? You do want to? Should we? Do you uh, have? To? You know what? Well, you know what? We'll do it. We'll do it after we try the one one seven as a tribute to Cheech. How's that sound? Okay. All right. As we'll a tribute that. to Cheech, we'll drink <laughs> some birthday bourbon. At hey, the we end. got uh, destination bourbons in the house. What's up, Mike? Uh, and a bunch of other people tuning in. So, so first, before we get, like I said, we talk about this special release and what it means. I think you know, let's talk a little bit about Women's History Month. What it means to you. Uh, in the world of American whiskey, uh, 
women in distillery, you know, women in dist are in distillery leadership roles now. I mean, historically, yeah. historically, it's not as odd as a lot of people think. They're Correct. across the country, you know. Today, women are the palates behind our favorite whiskeys. Case in point with you, but they blend. They run barrel pick programs. They run distilleries. They market. They manage warehouses. Uh, they push the envelope, and they do a lot more. Um, you know, where they create new expressions, as you see in front of us today. You know what what you're doing at Old Forester. Um, so, my question for you: You know, March is Women History Month, and with so many women pioneering and influencing the whiskey industry, do you feel a one month celebration is enough to recognize? the incredible work, or do you think this is just, it's a nice recognition, but this is something that really needs to happen all year round? I mean, so a valid, valid question. Um, <clears throat> my stance on it all has always been kind of interesting. I think that there is a very slippery slope and a nice balance to achieve for everybody and every company out there of sort of appreciating all of your employees, your male, your female, you're still figuring it out, like, or don't want to tell employees, it's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah but to still make sure that you're not being exploited for your gender because it's the marketing trend right now. I think that's also very important. Um, that's the women's yeah, history month. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, you don't think yeah. of it in terms as marketing, but it really is. It is, it is. Um, and it's interesting. I think throughout my career, I've always challenged everyone because you get those calls, right? Of like, oh, hey, like we want you to come to this market and there's this like women who whiskey club. You should totally talk to them. And I've always been very clear of like, no, that's cool. That's great. But you're coming with me because you can't be afraid to talk to women either. And I shouldn't be the only one that speaks to them. Everyone speaks to them. They're not scary. It's <laughs> very true. I don't know, yes. but like they're humans. So don't just assign the women to go handle the women things. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but uh, it's all good. Uh, the whole is one month enough. Is that enough of a celebration? Um, that kind of gets into that same zone of like, if you get flowers for Valentine's Day, do they count? You know what I mean? Or did somebody just say yeah, exactly. it Valentine's it, Day? It, but yeah. No one's gonna be like, I I refuse the flowers. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm you got I mean, you know I'm a history nerd when it comes to this stuff. So I mean, women have been involved in whiskey. I mean, you could take it all the way back to you know, they say when uh, you know, at the time of witches when they were brewing, <laughs> you know, it could you could go all the way back to that, you know, time in history. But I mean, all through you know, all through the, the, the times in bourbon, um, I recently was doing a video and was looking up all the information on Martha Samuels, you know, from Maker's Mark. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was the, uh, she was the brains behind the design of the bottle, the look, the whole wax dip thing was hers. I mean, uh, but it's funny how you don't really hear about it until, you know, the time of, you know, now comes around. So I just feel like it's a great thing to be highlighted. <laughs> But I think sure. it, would be even, it would be an even greater thing if it was just the norm. I agree with you 100% on that one, 100%. But the, we are still in this sort of um, intermediate period, right? Where we're still getting to establish that norm. And that's not just for women. It's for all sorts of different walks of life. Yeah. Um, and this is just kind of the phase that we find ourselves in, the sort of like purgatory, if you will, of like, is it right? Is it not? Just... Advice to everybody out there, just, you know, be nice to people and treat people like people. and We're all going to be okay. That's, That's all we right. Do. Well, Jack Daniels, another Brown Foreman brand, they just made history recently making Lexi Phillips the first female master distiller for Jack Daniels. Uh, she was in what? She was in quality control mm -hmm. and then a distillery lead operator. Uh, now she's, you know, now with a great pedigree of women in leadership roles. You have Elizabeth McCall at Woodford Reserve, uh, Lexi Phillips, you. Uh, which takes us now to the 117 series, which has your freaking signature on it, Rockstar. <laughs> I mean, this is the first bottle in the brand's history in 150 years to feature not only a different signature, but a woman's signature and your signature. I mean, yeah. fucking A for cementing your time in uh, history. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I hope they keep me around. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's it's kind of a weird feeling. It is. Um, so obviously, with most things in the world of whiskey, it's decided upon well before the public sees it, obviously. Um, yeah. So I knew it was coming. I couldn't really talk to anyone about it. Some very close friends knew about it. And when I would talk to them about it, I always teared up and was like, I can't believe this is a thing. I can't believe this is a thing. And now that it's out there, I'm like, okay, what's next? 
What do we move on to next? What's the next thing? What's the next yeah. thing? Um, yeah. Uh, it's great. It's amazing. It wasn't my idea. I'm not the one who I didn't like show up one day of like, so you're going to do this. Like, no, I had a really, really strong ally in Campbell Brown, who actually the brand team, when we were talking about label design for these products kind of brought up, like, is it time? Like we kind of yeah. Jackie a little, like throw a little bone here. And like, he was like, <laughs> That's right. let's do it. Okay. So yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a different story when you have to like bulldoze your way through the entire time, right? And be like, yeah. you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that. I'm gonna have my name here. When you see that other people appreciate and recognize your efforts towards growing a brand that's so important to the Brown family, like Old Forester is, um, that sure. itself means means a lot. But uh, yeah, I didn't even tell my mom about it. Like she's. <laughs> You didn't, tell you, you didn't tell your own mother? Why not? No, no because I know my mom and she wouldn't. I, there was an embargo on the press release because, it, you know, I couldn't. Oh. Um, oh, actually, I think remember, I think I remember the last time you came on, you told a story about your mom, you know, kind of, you know, saying little details she shouldn't be. So I, I now now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. You keep yeah. you keep things close to heart. I told my yeah. little brother about it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's. At the end of the day, it's just, it's there. It's a label. It's, it's great. But again, like I said, as soon as it was out, it was like, okay, great. Now what well, do I, I mean? Do? And, and knowing you, you probably, and knowing you, you probably care more about what people think of the, you know, the bourbon inside, you know? Yes, so, I do. Uh, and I have been terrified this entire time. <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, I'm terrified that that sounds wrong for me to be like, I'm so scared because I don't, I don't let it go out to market until I know it's good, but my good isn't always the same as everyone else's good, right? So well, I mean that's the beauty of, you know, that's kind of the beauty of the, you know, the different profiles that are out in bourbon right now, you know, but you know, I think you have you obviously have a, a vision for every old forester expression that you put out and work on. So, you know, if they don't like it, then they don't like it, but most people usually love it. So Right. And in my day to day personal life, I am totally cool to exist as like, take it or leave it. Don't really matter. But I'm also, you know, I, Brown Foreman pays me to like make sure people like the stuff. So I you also got to make the money, of course. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Curiosity Public, uh, another awesome channel. They're saying pretty awesome achievement. Um, uh, let's see. Bourbon Battalion says, hell yeah, Jackie. Uh, let's see here. I thought I saw one from Tom R. Oh yeah, he oh, said Tom R. for Jackie. Treat everyone nice, even people who mix old foe with Diet Dr Pepper. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. I am not a purist by any means. That's right. Whenever it makes you happy. I fully support, even if that's not to drink it at all. I also support that. You, you only live once. That's right. Um. So I mean, tell us about this one one seven series how it came to be and why the name 117. Okay, so we opened up our home place down on Whiskey Row, which is on Main Street in downtown Louisville, Kentucky, um, two and a half years ago, two and three quarters of a year ago, actually. Uh, and obviously when you open up a retail shop, you want to have something that has something special you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. And we had a million ideas of things to do that we're always playing around with and tinkering with but nothing was ready in time and we didn't feel comfortable pulling the trigger on anything at that moment. So we decided to launch President's Choice and bring that particular expression. I see you have a bottle back there behind you. Yes, I, uh, I sip it very slowly. <laughs> Indeed, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big whiskey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brought that back to life. Uh, the last time we did that one was 1972. So yeah. that bought us some time um to really fine tune what this needed to be what it needed to look like where we were going to stand on it um i think everybody in the category has the ability to get weird if they want to everybody can do weird um infusions and finishes and like tinker around with mash bills and stuff like that obviously that takes many more years of planning it's mm -hmm. everyone kind of has to age um but yeah, of course us, we took a different approach where we just figured we already have a good thing going. We're not just going to be weird for the sake of being weird, but why don't we sort of 
break it down and deconstruct those elements that make Old Forester Old Forester because within that realm is a huge learning opportunity and a familiarization with a side of the industry that most people don't get to see. Mm -hmm. uh, I have learned everything I know about whiskey as it relates to this job from firsthand experience, from actual tactile. Um, and there's a lot of things that I will never be able to fully articulate to people. I can describe them kind of, but you're never going to know exactly what I'm talking about until you taste it. And so the goal here was to deconstruct what we do and offer it in little, little shillings at a time. <laughs> shillings. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Little shillings. I mean, um, is this, is this essentially an innovation slash experimental series with future expression? Yeah. You said that you might highlight other unique whiskeys that you have, you know, aging mm -hmm. in the warehouse, whether it be, something funky with the barrel, whether it be a new mash bill, you know, stuff like that. Yes. All of that will come into play. Um, this particular first release was kind of a, is made out of function. I've been saving these barrels that are very low yields that otherwise just get thrown off into regular blends of old forester and mm -hmm. nobody talks about them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of had to be a time the warehouse was like, listen, <laughs> Now, did, did, the one, around. <laughs> did, did this particular, I mean, are you tasting that stuff? Like if it's a yes. very, if it's a very low yield, you're tasting that for, I guess, to see if you want to do something with it or not. Yes, completely. Okay. So, these are barrels. Um, this particular, this first batch is 27 different barrels, actually. But keep in mind, they're all less than 33% yield. Some of them significantly less than 33%. Mm -hmm. um, wow. But I have tasted them all, and um, it was kind of like, it's different than a single barrel. A single barrel is, you know, kind of its own little snowflake. There's no trend to it. Every barrel is completely unique. But if you take all barrels that all have this amount of yield to them and you batch them together, you're going to get kind of a consistent-ish flavor profile batch to batch, depending on your size. Um, so, yeah, it's just interesting. Low-yield barrels serve a really great purpose in blending. Um, they're very, very concentrated and they're very aggressive in flavor profile. And that's just, like I said, it's something that you don't really know what a low yield barrel tends to taste like unless you taste multiple low yield barrels. And so here have 27 of them in one bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was there, was there like a general, like, uh, I guess a, a flavor profile that kind of ran through all those 27 barrels that, that was, that were pretty constant um yes and no so it always is all over the place because mm -hmm. they're still a small batch if you want to call it a small batch of barrels uh but the more headspace you have in a barrel obviously the more air it's exposed to and the more uh stewed and oxidized those flavors tend to be it yep. gives you a different side of the coin where you're you're getting into the more like orange marmalade that sat out on the counter for a month as opposed to like fresh orange zest. It's a very different side of the coin and flavor profile. Um, Interesting. Yeah. But uh, they're, they're all unique, but yeah. yeah. But can you kind of tell us about the science a little bit of angel share and how it affects whiskey as it ages just for anyone out there that may not know what angel share or high angel share exactly means. Sure. Yeah, totally. So um, when we say angel share, we basically refer to the amount that, we lose during maturation. Um, a barrel in and of itself is a wonderful vessel to hold liquid, but they're not perfect. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, oak is very porous and you need that in order to get flavor out of the oak. But the problem is that you're also going to lose a little bit. So we do something called heat cycled warehousing at Old Forester. And with that, uh, because we don't let our barrels sit cold all winter long and the liquid dormant, we're getting more movement and we're getting faster maturation because we're doing heat up and down all yep. winter. Mm -hmm. And so we're losing a higher percentage, which is fine. The flavor of what we're actually getting left with is more concentrated. And then we, you know, stretch it out and dilute it. But uh, there are always going to be barrels that on a fluke leak, or there was a wormhole that no one noticed, or someone forgot to plug the sample hole when they drilled into it. That oh happens. boy. Oh boy. That happens. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's crazy. Yes, that happens. They don't, do, they don't just see the liquid just pouring out of the barrel. They just leave it. <laughs> well, okay. So when you have this barrel head, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just made my face on the screen up here. The, the barrel head. <laughs> the barrel uh, head. 
And when you drill into it, and the you drill into the bottom, obviously, because that's yeah, that's where the liquid is. Pressure so. is for you. Uh -huh. But there is a vacuum that happens, so you have to drill an air hole above liquid level on the top. And so it's those top air holes that usually get forgotten about, and they don't know until they go to move those ricks around, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh. Oh, so we're moving this barrel and now we got whiskey pouring out of everywhere. So yes. Or there could be leaks in the barrel that were just on the top of the barrel in the way that it sat. It never had really the chance to leak. But then once they get shifted around and all that, it um it happens. So I digress. What this means, you lose liquid, which means you've got what I call headspace, or what I guess everybody calls headspace in there, just mm -hmm. air in the barrel. Yep. That's your air exposure. For those out there uh, wrapping their noodles around this, think of it in the same way that you um, decant like a really like tight and really like heavy tannin red wine. Yeah. You're gonna aerate it. You're gonna give some oxygen to it. That's going to really soften out a lot of the acids. So with these whiskeys and these low yield barrels, they're not super super sharp in flavor profile. Everything is very kind of like mellowed together and really really well rounded. Um, but it's all very, very, very concentrated. And so I definitely recommend if you do get your hands on one of these bottles that you add some water or ice to it. I gave it to you in 110 proof form um, just to see. But personally, I think it's sweet spot is after a cube. So, oh, after a cube. Okay. After a cube. Yeah. All right. Well. There's a lot of layers in there. There's a lot. I'm gonna Let's let's dive into this thing because yeah. I'm sure everyone's waiting. They're like, just drink this stuff already. I want to know how it is. <laughs> Look at that little baby bottle. I love it. Isn't it adorable? Look how much I've left of this baby bottle. <laughs> you were like, I got my bottles. And I'm like, did you get one for me? Because yeah. please. So 110 proof. Uh, yeah. The high angel share bow release, the 117 uh, with your yeah. signature on it. I had the sample mm -hmm. bottle here that you guys sent me. So I'll kind of zoom in here. You guys can maybe see her signature. There it is. Aww. There's the signature right there. So, um, and I think, I think high angel share, the way you describe it is perfect. You know, it's, it's rounded. There's no really rough edges around it, but it's also very concentrated and very bold in flavor, which is if you had, I know Jack Daniels, they had a Tennessee taster series. Yes. That they release also three, seven fives. They did a high angel share that I was able to grab. And yeah, it was very kind of exactly like what you said, very concentrated, very bold, no real rough edges around it, you know, but high intense flavor, which was friggin' delicious. So when I heard that this was coming out, I'm like, oh, all farce was doing this. Okay. Okay. I'm on board. Here we go. <laughs> I know. And I love the folks at Jack so much. Yeah. But the day that I was like, I've got all these low yield barrels that I've just been hiding. Like, yeah. can you do that? Someone was like, Jack already did that. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but we did it. So here we are. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to. I'm going to probably pour a little bit more out of this later. And then I'm going to send the rest of this to my man Cheech for his birthday. So, oh, Cheech. So, so Cheech, if you don't get to have this, I'll send this to you for your birthday so you can try it along with us, you know, later. So cheers. All right. Happy birthday, Cheech. I look right, forward to drinking it. birthday bourbon in your honor. <laughs> That's right. All right. So this, I've let this kind of sit in the glass a little bit. It's, I mean, it's it's super desserty on the nose, I will say, off the bat. Uh, one thing I have gotten in your last three expressions has, and it, I mean, they've been in your in your tasting notes, but even now when I just go to it and I don't have any notes in front of me, it's that toasted coconut note. Nice. Um, yeah, it's one of those that the last, I've had them in a couple of the, uh, the single barrels that I've tried from Old Forest or the 100 Proofers tend to be a little bit more coconutty than the barrel proof ones. You still get that, there's a little tinge yeah. of that old Forrester banana. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, always, always. Yeah, it's dark, it's rich, like a lot of brown sugars here. There's also an, uh, an herbal quality to it that I'm picking up, almost like a, um, it's not black licorice, maybe it's a little bit more like on the star anise side, I think, mm -hmm. I'm picking up a little bit. 
Absolutely. That's absolutely there. And I think that there's a lot of a sort of a dried herbaceous note to it as well. It's not like a fresh grassy note. It's very dry and more hay-like on it. Um, it's interesting. It's a really interesting whiskey and it really, it's very front loaded on the palate. Like mm -hmm. there's a finish that will not leave you alone and it's going to stick with you the rest of the day. But it's still, especially on the tongue, it is very much front loaded. It's very active on the front and sides of your mouth. All right, I'm going to take a sip of this. Cheers and thanks for coming on. And Cheers. I cannot wait to taste this. And congrats to you, Jackie. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You are not you kidding. Are not. You are not kidding about it being front loaded. Yeah, very much so. It is very, very rich and full bodied on the front of the palate. A lot of, I mean, it's like just, I mean, this is like the best like caramel bar like you'll ever, it's so rich on the front of the palate. It gets, and then like you said, like right on the back end, it definitely more that herbal star anise quality I'm getting on the back end too. And it just kind of hangs around, nice little finish to it. But yeah, all that flavor and that punch, it's like, I get like this mix of like, if you ever, if you had like a Christmas cookie with like really good, intense, like vanilla icing and then filled it with caramel, that's what it tastes like. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Somebody should make those, by the way. That sounds good right now. Yeah, someone out there, can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and ship me some. Uh, the coolest thing about this whiskey is that um, when you do add water to it, the texture becomes oilier and much more viscous, which you would think it's very counterintuitive. You think, oh, you're going to water it back. It's going to thin it out, but it blossoms. It really, trust me on this. And if you went out there and got a bottle, um, and you're kind of torn, like, do I resell it or do I open it? You open it and you add a drop of water and then you go, oh, I totally see what she's talking about. It's mm -hmm. an interesting experience. For sure. I love a really thick, greasy whiskey. I yeah. really do. Um, and this just completely turns into that. Uh, it's hidden in there. It's hidden in the layers right now, straight out of the bottle. But it's waiting for you to find it, everybody. So just. <laughs> I'm definitely going to drop a cube in this later and see what happens to it. Okay. Awesome. You'll have to let me know. Yeah, right now. It is. And you're not kidding. The. I haven't haven't I haven't had to go back and take a sip because the spice is just it's still there. It's still there. It's lingering. It is. It's very herbal. Black pepper. A little bit of um there is a note here. I'm trying to there's there's an herb quality to it that I'm trying to like pick up what that is. Mm. Maybe it's because I'm Italian. I feel like it's like basil or like an oregano or something like that. It's totally oregano. It's totally Italian oregano, not Mexican oregano. It's not like citrusy and limey in that direction. It's mm -hmm. very, 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 yep. It's more savory. Yeah, savory. Uh, yeah, so say, yeah, savory oregano around the back end, which is, it's like, holy shit. It's like you're taking <laughs> you're taking all these like sweet flavors. It, it's, it's almost like it's light and dark at the same time. Yes. You, know, you get all this light sweetness on the front and then all this back end, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of dark too on the front end with like that rich caramel, dark brown sugar, you know, molasses, whatever you want to call it. And on the back end, it really just gets nice and peppery and herbal, but in like the best way possible. Mm. It's everything. It's a universe in a glass. It's <laughs> it's a universe in a glass. If Thanos from Marvel was drinking <laughs> whiskey, this would be it. <laughs> That's awesome. So I know we talked a little bit about some of your future expressions with the 117. I mean, are we talking also some finishing techniques you guys are planning on doing? You have your own cooperage, so I feel mm -hmm. like you can do a lot of, you know, fancy stuff with some barrels. You're right. We can do a lot of fancy stuff with some barrels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to pull it out of her, guys. <laughs> I know. Um, there are very, very many exciting things coming. Um, like I said earlier, we've been working on this for a long time, and so... Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different and some kind of, you know, 
funky, but not for the sake of like purposely being weird, but just kind of highlighting some of the really cool aspects of Old Forester's history and yeah. flexing some of our production muscle. When you when you do everything yourself, you have all control in the world to do anything you want. So. So what are we looking at as far as, I mean, I know you have to plan these out ahead. I mean, we're we looking at an annual release for these or it really just depends on when stuff is ready. Well, I mean, like the original intention was to have something always available at the gift shop that people from out of town or wherever could always find something they couldn't find anywhere else. Yeah. So we were like, oh yeah, let's like pull the trigger on this and we'll make tons of it because we'll always have it. And that's not really how it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's going to no. happen because, yeah, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll make enough. We'll have some of the distillery. <laughs> people come visit out of town. It won't be a big yeah. deal. And then you wake up this morning and there's people online at 3 a.m. So Yes, and yeah. people are already flipping it. We already have seen that activity going on, which it, it, it happens. It is what it is. Um, but that being said, there have already been discussions about like, oh, crap, like if people are going to like this, maybe we need to like reconfigure what the volume of this is. Um, by no means is Old Forester the brand mm. that purposely uh, or it forces scarcity to make something more appealing. You know what I mean? If you're going to make something good, then make enough for everybody at the party. You know, like why? People want it because it's good. They don't want it because it's hard to find. Or maybe it's both. I don't freaking know. But I digress. <laughs> it's not an annual thing. It was intended to always be there. So that being said, you probably will see more of it come out throughout this year. You're going to see all kinds of fun things come out from Old Forcer because that's what we do. We give you something new and sparkly and shiny to look forward to every single year. All right, guys, so mark it down. that We don't know what's coming out. It's going to be a bunch of things with diamonds and sparkles on the bottles. That's all we know. I mean. <laughs> You're like, if you could, I'm I would. I'm not saying things are not possible. Anything is possible on this brand, I guess. If I could, if I, could I would, absolutely. Oh, it's man. Good. So, good again, again, real quick, I think somebody missed it. They were in the comment. Where did the 117... Mm -hmm. uh, references for is that the original address number you said you had said that's the address of the distillery actually so because OFD as we call it old forcer distillery is the original location for the brand um, obviously it made sense to do a distillery only series that referred back to that particular location um, uh, yeah we we went through a lot of different name options and this is one that the entire team agreed was gonna fit so that's what we did and here you are. It's an address. It's getting more like vanilla extracty too, as it opens up a little bit more. But that yes. herbal, that herbal quality there, it's still there. It still hangs around. It still kind of grips on to the back of your throat. There does not want to let go at all, oh. <laughs> which, which, which I like. It doesn't. It's very know, committed. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's committed. It's committed to making you just you know kind of sip on this you know very ever so gently because it it really does hold on, but. In a really good way. I mean, for me, I don't like bourbons that just kind of disappear real quick. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of goes away. Yeah, but there's, you know, there's a lot of drinkers like that. There's a lot of drinkers that like, you know, they want to get all the flavor and the sweetness up front, but they don't want the burn on the back end. But this sure. isn't this isn't so much burn as it is just like herbal flavors. And that's, I think that's the big difference between, you know, right. a good bourbon and a great bourbon. Yeah, it's so structurally sound. Um, and I'm going to make a reference that probably only like, I don't know, 12% of people watching are going to get. Maybe I'm underestimating, though. There was a movie way back in the day. Never, I, never underestimate the chat room. <laughs> okay. Do you remember the movie The Cell? Yes. Yes. Okay. You know the scene where like the thing comes down and like severs the horse into all these pieces and then it moves out and like expands and you can like see the inside of the horse. This is weird. This is getting really dark. <laughs> this is getting dark, but yes. Hang with me. Okay. That's what adding water to this bourbon is going to do. It's literally this beautiful, amazing and perfectly good on its own the way it is thing. But the second you add water, it's going to extrapolate all these different layers and dimensions of it. And that vanilla bean, that vanilla extract you're talking about is very, very, um, it's very tight and it's very woodsy and it's it's really, really dark. But then once you add water, it transforms into this like very beautiful buttery vanilla icing and like 
creme brulee, but without the crunchy top on. So I guess creme, like whatever. Um, <laughs> just the creme, just the creme. Yeah, <laughs> take the brulee part out. But it's it's amazing. It's definitely a whiskey well worth uh, discussing and sipping in good company. It is going to spark a lot of really, really cool tasting notes and a lot of different experiences. Yep, J-Lo, that's yes, right. I remember that, so you never underestimate yep. the chat. Uh, <laughs> the horse scene. Jenny it was weird, you could like see the horse heart beating through like the different like, it was very strange, very weird movie, but. Yes, awesome movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is the, this you is never the know what you're getting by the old forester tasting. This, you know, this is the mentality know. approach I, I'd want my distillers to adopt. <laughs> uh, let's see here. A whiskey that you know the tasting notes really read like a dissected horse. It's gonna be wonderful. That sounds. Good. Be, I mean, I, that should be the next to your. That should be the name no. of the one one seven. Just the one one seven series, dissected horse. But like the horse is still alive. This is very important to mention. Oh, that's true. The horse is still alive yeah, until you the add the water. The yeah, until you add the water, then it gets then it gets cell. Then you could see all the insides. Yes. Great. <laughs> it's very cool. Uh, Eric McDaniel saying, "But where's my bananas, Fosters?" <laughs> there's, there's, it's there? there's, it's there. The banana's yeah. there. But for those of you out there that don't like a a banana forward version of Old Forester. I don't think this is it. So, um, <laughs> uh, Bourbon Battalion, I love how flavors can morph and really express themselves in different lights. It's all about the cell, exactly. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch that tonight now just to remember it. It's probably not gonna be as like cool as I thought it was back in like, what year was that? Like 98 or something? Like when was the cell? Now I'm like, someone, somebody Google when the yes. cell came Yeah, from. somebody, somebody IMDB that thing. <laughs> Find what it is. Um, all right, so Cool Running has a good idea. Get some water and give us your views. So that's what I'm going to do. I have some water right there. I'm going to grab some and pour a little bit in here. In the uh, in the meantime, Jackie, why don't you tackle this question? This is this is an interesting question. Kind of get your take on. I don't know if you've seen this already. I saw in our team group for the old Forrester brand team. Um, a couple of hours back, somebody put a, a message on there saying that they saw it's already selling on secondary for 200 plus. I didn't know 250 plus was the range that we're in, but um, I honestly, I have no control over that. I hope that at some point, at least some of those bottles get cracked because it is a really cool whiskey sipping experience. I'm flattered that bottles would flip for that much, um, especially 375. Uh, it's, it's easy to me, um, but I get it. I'm not saying it's not worth it. I'm not saying it should have been priced at that and we missed our mark. Um, we're really not in the game of price gouging, um, <coughs> the game of giving people good whiskey and making it accessible. And, you know, we really missed the mark on making it, you know, constantly accessible. I, we tried. <laughs> Damn. We're just well, again, I actually got a few know? messages. I got a few messages this week. Um, once people found out you were coming on, they, they, they thought the 375 milliliter bottles are pretty brilliant. Oh, and they're adorable. They're super cute. It's literally a miniaturized version of the Whiskey Row bottle and the President's Choice bottle. They're adorable. Um, and and they're great. It's, it's a great size. I can't remember who I was saying this to the other day, saying this to somebody. I've talked to a lot of people in the past 24 hours. I'm starting to lose track of time. On that. <laughs> but um, it's a great size to bring and to share because not only is it a massive amount of flavor for the volume of liquid that it is, but also you know you're going to finish off that bottle in a group of people. And then you have to have that awkward moment of like, well, we opened this bottle of whiskey and like, I'll be taking that back home with me. Thank you. Like, you don't, you know, it's yeah. a, Bring it to the party, enjoy it, and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, the flippers today are just, you know, they, they kind of, it's it's just like an ongoing thing. We won't see it, and I don't think as long as bourbon fans out there keep buying the bottles at these prices, unfortunately. So. Sure. <clears throat> and, I mean, think of it from this perspective that this is the first one we did. So, of course, we did a massive amount of, like, media push around it to let everyone know it exists. Of course. 
maybe the next rounds we're not going to talk about so much and we'll just kind of let people discover them out of the distillery so keep an eye out oh that's a good that's a good very good uh i think that's a great idea let people kind of discover them it's um kind of had that experience uh you know sometimes when you go to distilleries in their gift shops you can just be in there meandering around and all of a sudden little car comes out they start stocking shelves with stuff and you're like holy shit what's that yeah and you just you isn't know, that such a better moment than like standing on a sidewalk at 3 a.m <laughs> exactly you know? that happened with me at the evan williams experience i went in there and um uh, they had uh, they started stocking the shelves with the Evan Williams twenty three, and I was like, "Wait, what?" So yeah, see, yeah, all right. And so three, and then you tell people, and you continue to tell people even while you're doing a Forrester broadcast. <laughs> here's a good uh, here's a good question: Will the future ones ever get out of Kentucky? Um, I don't know. We talked about that too. Uh, right now, like I said, the original intention was for this to be a this is something you can get at the gift shop that you can't find anywhere else. Um, but like if, if the people have spoken, we do a pretty decent job of listening to feedback, I think. So open to suggestions. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So I have, I have this little bit left here. How much water do you think I should add here? Um, I mean, do a couple drops to start. Like, all right. I don't have my eyedropper. So I'll just try that's to okay. Go. Just a little tiny little splash You'll be good. All right, a little splasheroni, got it. Technical terms, yeah. Splasheroni, you know, this, this, is, what, this is what we're talking about here. We do a little <laughs> splasheroni. So, all right, I'm gonna let this get some air in it. Uh, if you guys also have any other questions, you know, for Jackie, you could kind of get them in now. We're gonna let this sit a little bit before we uh, go in and take a deep dive. Um, Jackie might be my new favorite whiskey personality. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's because I talked about the cell, isn't it? That's like, what it is. I think you you garnered a whole new like cult following just talking about the cell. <laughs> oh my! My mother is proud. Is yeah, you? yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, sugar kitties, right? I use Italian tech terms all the time. So yeah. Okay, I need yeah. an example. What's an Italian tech term? Uh, well, you know, my, my biggest coined one is I, I don't say water. I say water. So yeah, I got some water. Um, I say use twos a lot. Use guys. Use twos. Use twos. Like when there's two people on the screen, I'm like, Hey, use twos. What are you drinking? You know, stuff like that. Stop it. I need to no, That's happening now. <laughs> not, not, 100%. Not, yeah. Not like you too, but you twos, use twos. You know. Use twos. Yeah, use twos. Yeah, they're both plural. Yeah, use twos. So next time you're talking to two people in distillery, if you got two guys, you know, doing whatever, you know, just standing around, you hey, use twos. Come over here, help me. You know, something like that. Yeah, I need yep. some more use twos. Yeah. Oh, uh, butter peeking is my other one. So. But but who? <laughs> but <laughs> Why? <laughs> So whenever I uh, whenever I find butter pecan in a uh, in a bourbon, like in the flavor profile, I call it, I call it butter pecan. <laughs> butter pecan. Butter pecan. This is a constant debate, ongoing, always. Is it pecan? Is it pecan? Um, yeah. That's it, why I just I just kind of undercut all that and just call it. I just went right to pecan. Pecan. Yep. Yeah. Butter pecan. <laughs> You'll never, if you ever come across butter pecan or butter pecan, whatever you call it in your tasting notes, that's what you're going to think of now. I'm, I'm just going to write butter pecan. That's it. I'm going to spell it out the way that you are pronouncing it. Yeah, it's P-E-E-K-I-N. So like in the hang tag of birthday bourbon, it'll say like butter pecan and people be like, <laughs> I'm definitely getting some butter pecan and like not admit that they don't know what the hell that means. Yeah, if I ever, if I, if I, the next time, if I ever lucky enough to do a uh, Old Forest or single barrel at some point, that's going to be the name of it. We're going to call it butter pecan. I'm going to search for butter a barrel that tastes like butter pecan. Okay. I will keep an eye out on inventory. If I come across a butter pecan barrel, I'm gonna save it and hold it, and we are we'll do the we'll do the thing. I yeah, I'm in. That'll be amazing. Yep. Okay. Okay. So add some water to the. Uh... <laughs> the water. <laughs> Love it. Here we go. Christopher M says, "Congratulations, this is Jackie, on the historic milestone of your career." Cheers. Thank you, Christopher M. Absolutely, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're right. The the sweetness got brighter, at least at least on the nose. I am just like 
so freaking excited for you to actually taste it and see the complete difference in texture that happens. It's it, not as it's not as herbal oh. as it was on the on the nose either. It got mm -hmm. it got real. I think when you said that creme brulee top, that's what I'm I'm kind of smelling. It's like a it's like a charred like sugar. All right, I gotta taste it now. Here we go. Cheers. Okay. I'm scared. <laughs> Am I scared? Did I make it up? Oh no, you didn't make it up. So, whoa. Whoa, there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, oh, that's weird. <laughs> so the, yeah, the mid palate. So it's still very bold in the front of the palate, but the mid palate gets like, um, and, and I don't, I'm not saying this because we brought up the horse before, but it literally gets like glue. It, it just kind of sticks. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! No more horse references. No more horse references. Yeah, it gets, it gets like a like this glue, like a more of a like a very viscous texture. It does. Yes. It, it gets a little bit more like thicker and richer, which you would, which doesn't make sense to me because I you're know. adding something. You're adding water to something that's like concentrated. So, adding water to it and it becoming a little bit more velvety mm -hmm. actually kind of like defies my logic. <laughs> I know. Is there You're is there some science, is there some science behind that you could school me with? <laughs> oh God, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, but if, if you had to give me the cliff notes, enjoy it. Just enjoy <laughs> it. enjoy the the butter. I'm in for a butter peak and old forester pick. Somebody said. <laughs> there you all right. go. Perfect. Oh my God. Mm. It's awesome. All right. It's awesome. And I feel so weird because I've never once before in all of the different products I've been so fortunate to be a part of releasing for this brand, I have never, ever, ever released a product and been like, it's really good, but do this to it. But like, trust me, people like do it, try it on its own. Totally cool. But don't sacrifice that experience of seeing that transformation. It's so cool. It is it's a hundred different whiskeys in one bottle. It's amazing. So it went from herbal on the back end to like this, like this sweet coffee note, like a, like a light coffee with, um, almost like you put like caramel creamer in it or something. Yes. It's like this caramel macchiato situation going on, but like not super, super robust. It's very, yeah, it's not, it's not like hot. you put it. Yeah. It's not like you put it in, in, in an espresso mm -hmm. it's more. It's like a lighter coffee note. I mean, I will say the, I was a scared the herbal quality would go away. Like the bite meaning like that little bit of prickliness you get on the back end. It's still there, which is great. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I don't want to ever lose that. But what it does to the front and mid palate is pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> if any, it's ridiculous. If, yeah, if any of you guys out there were lucky enough to get a bottle of this, definitely <laughs> add a few drops of water to it. It's a whole nother experience. It really is. Um, it really keep goes from that. Keep say, going. I, no, no, keep no, going. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no worries. I was just going to say, I mean, from the difference from the, from the beginning when we tried it, when you have like all these bold, sweet flavors, um, then mid palate, you start getting this, uh, this spice kick to it. And then it just keeps going on the back end. It gets a little bit like that oregano, uh, like flavor I was getting that was kind of sparking in the back of the palate. I mean, you add some drops of water to it. Not only does it get a little bit sweeter, but this like little coffee note comes out, the texture changes. Um, it gets a little bit more concentrated. It's crazy. It's, it's really good. I mean, to have a three, seven, five of this, What's kind of cool, like judging just based on this experience, you're kind of getting two whiskeys in one. If you, if you, if someone out there buys a bottle and you know they take a sip, then they add a couple drops of water to it. It's like they're experiencing a couple different whiskeys here. Um, yeah. You know, which you could do with a lot of different bourbons, but the the change in this one is really, you know, it's very stark. It is, and the beautiful thing about it is that it doesn't stop there. Because trust me, I've spent a lot of. Obviously, I've drank an entire bottle to myself in the past three days. Yeah, it, it's very interesting that I still have yet to reach a point of dilution on this one where it flattens, where the finish disappears. It stays no matter what. It stays. It's just that 
it, it shifts from the front palate to the mid palate. It becomes oilier, it becomes richer, it becomes denser. And then it just goes through all these different peaks and valleys. Um, so even if you keep adding water to it, keep adding, it's just like everlasting gobstopper of a bottle of bourbon. Like it's so crazy. It just keeps unfolding. And yeah. it, it's like too diluted. To, it's, it's awesome. It's amazing. I'm very happy. Yeah. It almost feels like if you keep adding water to this, it'll just never lose any sort of flavor to it. It just, no. it's so like potent. Correct. I don't know it's, if I, I don't know if I like it before or after water. <laughs> okay. It's like one of those. That's okay. Yeah. Like, honestly, like this is, it's bourbon. This is going to sound really strange. I hope no one like misreads this. This is Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey in and of itself in a bottle. But mm -hmm. because we've taken such concentrated little fragments of all these different barrels, basically handed you this tiny little bottle of bourbon extract that you're then just sort of like, lengthening out into however you choose to drink it. Um, exactly. And that's, I think that's a perfect way to say it's bourbon extract and you can dilute it a little bit just to open it up. You know, when mm -hmm. you think of, when you think of extract, it's so concentrated, but it's also tight. So you add a little right. water to it or you mix it in something. If you're making, you know, cake or cookies, then all of a sudden it influences the entire, you know, the entire dessert or whatever you're making. And I could, I could see kind of that working here a little bit. Um, sure. Is there, is there a specific, kind of age range of these barrels because there was so much dilution. Oh yeah. And I knew you were going to ask that. So I made a list. Look at my, you can't see it. It's like red. You made a list for us? I Look made a that. list of every barrel that went into this batch so that I could do my homework. Um, and I, I have nothing to hide. Like I'm totally excited. I'll probably post it on Instagram later. Um, every single barrel that went into this darn batch, uh, it's 27 barrels. The youngest one is four and three quarters of a year old. Okay. And the one is almost seven years old. So it's like spanning that range in heat cycling and all less than 33% yields. So is heat cycling, so, I mean, is heat cycling really kind of, I mean, if you're talking a four-year-old bourbon, is it, truth be told, does it really feel like a, like maybe a, a bourbon that's like maybe two more years old based on that heat cycling? Yeah. Is that, is that really a, that's a that's an on that's a thing that happens. Yes. Okay. It's actually, a thing. We've spent a very long time analyzing this of maturity rating versus actual length of time spent in the warehouse. So yeah, the rule of thumb is six months added on for every year spent in heat cycling. So a four year old drinks like a six year old, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's about a two year, uh, two year difference when you're thinking about it. Yeah, so four and three quarters, you're looking at six to seven year old flavor profile all the way up to barrels that have a 10 and a half year old flavor profile mingled together. So there's a lot in there. There's a lot to unpack in that bottle. Yeah, that's a lot of flavor. So you have that huge range of age there kind of blended together. Um, man, I'm kind of, I have a little bit left. I can't go back for more because I got to. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, poor Cheech, you're not getting anything. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's going to send you an empty bottle. Or he's going to refill it with tea or something. I know, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, geez. So, what are your. I know someone had a question in the chat. Your. Uh, what, are, what are the ages of the single barrels coming out of right now? Because I think a lot of people are seeing them now. They're interested. Mm -hmm. They kind of want to know what, the, what is that age range for the single barrels? The Old Forester Single Barrel Program, um, you usually don't see anything in bottle any younger than four and a half, and then usually nothing older than six. If there's a six-year-old barrel in your lineup of samples when you get the set, um, it's kind of a unicorn. So, okay. Uh, but we've been, that program has been growing so fast, not to say we don't have plenty of bourbon sitting around waiting to be adopted, but um, we do whole lots at a time. And in general, that's kind of the age range you're looking at right now. Yeah. So, but in heat cycled uh, life cycles, you're looking at six to eight years old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flavor uh, profile wise, yeah. Yeah. Jo just started adding a pinch of salt to my old fashioned yes. thing, Jackie. Good. I said, where was I when I said that the other day? I can't keep any of this straight. I were <laughs> you. I you were somewhere. <laughs> His birthday is going in my calendar now. I'm not going to send him a card every year. <laughs> that one I won't forget. But uh, a pinch of salt is the magic solution to any and every cocktail. You salt your food, you should salt your drinks too. 
All right. Not so uh, yeah, we have I mean, like margarita style, but like just like a couple of sprinkles. Yeah, a little little pinch of some kosher. You salt. You need the little bay there. thing, you know, the salt bay thing, like. Oh like, yeah, right off the. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some. I've seen some. Uh, some single barrel picks with the salt bay label on it. It's pretty. Pretty epic. <laughs> You're getting very creative anymore. These. Uh, these labels. And yeah, these the labels things. get a little crazy. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Oh, I had a I had a uh, couple super chats I missed. I think there was one from JG. I gotta see. He said I missed one. Where is it? Um. Whiskey nose. Uh, okay. Oh, Ben Lagar. I'm also in for a but a peek and pick. <laughs> oh, here we go. JG, I've been watching Jackie's cocktail makes uh, and other old Forrester stuff. So good. 877 mash now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have to say, I am not affiliated with that phone number or that hotline, wherever it takes you. I do not take responsibility for that. Yeah, that's the uh, the mash the like button. It's kind of like the thing. Like, well, okay. the like button. So mash it now. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning so many things today. <laughs> Juice Journey, Bryce is checking in from work. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for checking in, man. Appreciate it. Um, Jackie, what do you say we pour a little bit of that birthday bourbon? And this, I know the yeah. last time I know the last time you were on, you kind of wanted to ask us some questions. So I was wondering if you had any questions that you wanted to ask either me oh. or the or the or the collective chat here. Oh. Um, well, hold on. Let me grab a bottle really quick. All right. Yeah. Grab the birthday bourbon. Dust on it. I haven't opened it. I'm just going to say, did you just blow some dust off that? I did. <laughs> I know. I'm so sweet. I, I got a lot of bottles hanging around and you know. All right. There's a question. Who wants to, to be my personal bottle toaster? I'll gladly pay somebody to come keep all my bottles on if uh if you're gonna pay them whiskey, if you're gonna pay them in whiskey you might have another line outside your door at 3 a.m <laughs> <laughs> uh chris oh, this year's birthday bourbon was so good chris benny says when you two get together at such an amazing time just bought an old farce birthday bourbon for my birthday last friday oh nice. happy birthday to you chris yes happy happy belated to you yeah here we go i'm in me i'll be there tomorrow <laughs> I'll dust the bottles. <laughs> First dibs. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> okay. Well, step one. Happy birthday, Cheech. Yes, Cheech Artelino, good uh, good friend of the show. He's also a drummer like I am, so we talk Ooh. a good amount. Yeah. God, it's so good. So which one are you're drinking last year's? Uh, 2020. So this the most recent. The most recent. Yeah, I'm drinking. Um, uh, this is the 2018, which is the 12 year old one. Nice. Yes. I love, I love this one. I'm like looking around, like I'm gonna find another one. Like they're just randomly sprinkled throughout my. <laughs> um. No, this is a good one, and that's another thing, everybody. Keep in mind, there's always gonna be every year. There's a birthday. And this year's is not gonna disappoint by any means. So, I can't tell you anything about it, but I can tell you that it's still gonna be a thing. I don't know. Everyone's like, and we knew that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I want to know what people want to see come out of the 117 series. Like, what kind of weird crap do you want us to do? Like, what do you want us to tinker with? What kind of weird crap? I, mean, I, remember, it. I remember, yeah. So, all right, chat, start blowing, start blowing it up. Let us know what kind of weird crap you want out of the 117 series. Um, I think for me, we brought it up last time. We would love to see, you know, old Forrester dabble in doing a weeder, maybe. Uh, now, whether or not that's a regular release or something that comes out of the 117 as a almost maybe like a kind of a, a, a market, just kind of a, a test market type uh, whiskey, that might be pretty cool. Um, let's see if uh, anyone else says, oh, yeah, the barrel proof rye. I know a lot of people have been asking for that one. Mm -hmm. um, this is a this is a good one. Double barreled or possibly a toasted old Forester. Okay. Jake, have you had the 1910? That's a double, a double barreled expression. It's delicious. Yes, the double barrel does happen with the 1910. Uh, let's see. There's a there's <laughs> coconut butter <a> pecan. <laughs> butter pecan. Oh my oh, god. Here's a good uh this is a good one, actually. Um, where is it? The Second, the Boo Rye, maybe like a bourbon rye blend. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Burai's. Burai's tend to be. Um, I've had more ones. I've had more Burai's that I've liked and I've disliked. I think they actually. You blend it right. You can do it really. It definitely brings out some interesting flavors, some interesting profiles within the whiskey. Um, let's see. Yeah, the 1910 is my favorite, says Deborah C. Um, awesome. ooh, a cognac finish. Oh, well, Tim. <laughs> Maybe we have it sitting there already. I don't know. I don't know, Tim. It's so that's okay. I'm going to start writing these down, everybody. Just see you. Let me that's, know. That's Tim Gorgeous. I call him. I call him Tim Gorgeous. Tim Gorgeous. Tim Gorgeous. Uh, oh my God. We have another finish. Uh, port finish. Port finish. I'm right there with you, Brett. I would um, love to explore that. I love port finished things. Yeah. Um, let's see. I, I would that. love to see. I would love to see what a high malted barley bourbon would be like. That's from Donald Rand. Okay. Now he's a he's an Irish whiskey purist, so that's not that's not surprising that he's asking for that. <laughs> um, oh my God, a hazmat old Forester. Oh my God. See, but like, why, Nick? Why? You want to burn, Nick? <laughs> why do you want to burn we, your senses? I, right. Take care of your body. Uh, we have hazmat barrels. They are um, here and there. The barrels that end up in the single barrel program in the inventory that's allowed to be chosen from for the 100 proof expression typically mm -hmm. are hazmat barrels. But because we don't bottle it, it has, I know, Nick, you're asking for us to actually like give it to you in like, <laughs> but in a way, it's like you had hazmat, but we just like went ahead and added a little splash roni for you. There you go, the splash roni again. It's, it's my splash favorite. It's my I, favorite. I got something. I it's my favorite type of pasta, actually. Splasheroni? Yeah, you have rigatoni, you have penne, and then you have splasheroni. That's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, honey barrel finished. Okay. <clears throat> so I was thinking, just one of my idea, my one of my ideas is because Brown mm -hmm. Foreman does have a huge umbrella of brands. I mean, you have Glendronic and some uh, some great some great partners you could work with on the barrel side. I think it'd be really cool to. Um, <clears throat> maybe age an old farce or one of like a really nice Pedro Jimenez, like Sherry Cass kind of bring out and punch up those, uh, those sweet flavors that go along with the old Forester uh, flavor profile, especially like if you do like a 1920 prohibition style profile, a little bit of that chocolate cherry, then you blend that with like a Pedro Jimenez or an Oloroso Sherry Cask. Holy shit. Come on. No, I know. And I'm not allowed, obviously, I am taking all of your ideas. I'm writing them down on my on my piece of paper here. Yeah. I'm allowed to say if we actually have any of those actually coming to market because we don't say until we're about to release them. Or I know some yeah. of you really stalk the TTB website to see, and then you tell all your friends. <laughs> who are. Uh, but I will say that when, if, not when, if that particular expression comes out, uh, as a friend, I will let you take credit for it, but it may not have been, you may not have been the first one to think to do that. If it oh, yeah, I, I would, I would assume that with, you know, the, the breadth of brands you guys have, you know, there has to be some creative crossover there. Um, I mean, that's, that's how I would think if I'm looking to do some, you know, creative things within, you know, your, yes. you know, your lineup, I mean, that's kind of a no brainer. I think that you and I think very similarly in these terms. <laughs> That's all I'm allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, ADHD whiskey. Uh, does Jackie want to join Dixon Deadman as an old charter blend judge? Could probably make yeah. that happen. So, yeah. uh, so, so ADHD whiskey. We collaborate as whiskey tubers. Uh, we start off. He makes his own blend of bourbon, and then. It goes around to all these different video, uh, all these different YouTubers, uh, bloggers, um, a podcast that have to do with uh, bourbon and American whiskey. And basically everyone gets to pour out some and then based on what they think they taste and what it needs, then everybody, each individual gets to add two ounces or four ounces of whatever they want if they think that something is missing. Um, that is amazing. Yeah, then basically what happens last year, it went to Dixon Deadman. He got the final blend. And basically it was his it was his job to either say, I love it, or to fix it a little bit. 
And then uh, we gave actually we raised money for uh, St. Jude's for uh, to uh, to give the bottle away for the final blend, which is amazing. So all from the mind of ADHD whiskey, who is uh, one of the greatest people in whiskey tube. So um, Jackie, if you want to be part of tasting that and maybe helping yes. us out a little bit, that'd be amazing. Yes, <laughs> that would be so cool. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, Jackie in Old Forester Ride Gin Finish. Mm. Mm. Mm, that's interesting. We have all of the things. Toasted barrel weeded. Okay. Dave just re really went for it. He's like all the things. Yeah. He's like, not only do I want a weeder. Mash bill? Yeah. Not only do I want a weeder, but I want you to toast that thing. <laughs> Um, always, uh, always kind of interested to see like how, you know, certain bourbon brands react with rum. I think maybe an old Forester rum collab could be something pretty cool too. Uh, mm -hmm. you never know how like that maple syrupy flavor could go with a certain flavor profile. Um, yeah. And you know, like there's so much, okay. In, cause when was the last time anyone used the term Venn diagram in the <laughs> of like a bourbon flavor profile versus a rum flavor profile, there's so much overlap that it's a very slippery slope that if you go a little too harsh in it, people drink it and they're like, it's rum. That's all I get is rum. Um, yeah. I think that there's definitely some really interesting funky rums out there that could be kind of cool to, to work with and every piece maintains its own identity, but mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah, people are throwing out a lot of finishes. I think finishes are kind of, you know, it's like almost everyone's doing it, but it's kind of also fun. I feel like I don't, I don't want, you know, if there's any innovation with uh, different flavor profiles when it comes to different grains, you know, I never want to abandon that. Just kind of throwing something in a finished barrel is great and it can alter, uh, you know, a bourbon for either the better or for worse. But I think, you know, I think experimenting with different grains, you know, especially when you combine that with a specific distillery's yeast strain and seeing what it does to the, to the whiskey, you know, it's, it's kind of, you never know. So I, I would love to see that too. Jackie's just, the, so shoulders, the shoulders, the shoulders and the eyes. Just oh, yes. in a way. Oh, man. But I, I really think, uh, I think the beauty of what you guys can do is not only with your umbrella brands, but the fact you also have your own cooperage. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, look at 1910. I mean, you guys charred charred the shit out of a barrel and you double barrel double barreled it and it literally made like liquid you know coffee chocolate goodness <laughs> yeah basically yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. it says on the tasting notes too yeah for sure so chocolate coffee goodness <laughs> it's awesome i love it let's see scott says how about something finished in my basement you know i can provide quality control i think he just he's just looking to get a barrel in his house <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, actually, this is a good, this is an issue. I would like to get your take on this. Uh, not that you would use this brand, but a smoky scotch barrel finish, give it a nice smoke hit. Something peated, not saying peat the bourbon, but maybe finish it in a peated uh, scotch cask, maybe. I'm not sure. Those are very hit and miss for me. I've had some, some yes. peated bourbons and I've had some smoke bourbons that are either awful or really interestingly good so i agree and i was a diehard scotch drinker before i ever dabbled in the world of bourbon so i wouldn't be surprised if that little scotch drinking jackie comes through at some point uh in the old forester family just saying uh scotch drinking jackie's coming out uh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's see um all right i think um just trying to see if there's any more questions I missed for you. I think that's it. Uh, Scott Johnson said, I'll thermal cycle my basement if you pick me over Scott. <laughs> we got people ready to do uh, heat cycle basements now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very generous. Very, yes, very generous. absolutely. Um, uh, that's good. I, I'm, I'm excited that everyone wants to, to be a part of it. That's a good problem to have, right? So. Yeah, Bubble Bath Bourbon says mini sample packs so I could send them to people to try Old Forester. Um, I think uh, I think we raised the idea last year that if you could do, um, you know, birthday bourbon in smaller bottles so more people can get to try it uh, would be pretty cool. But, uh, you know, the cost – I actually brought that up to – so Campbell Brown was on the show, and I brought that up to him, and he goes – 
he goes first. He, he looked like he was a good idea, and then he thought of the then all of a sudden the businessman like cost came in, yes. like how like how much money it would cost to shrink these to a smaller size, and then I think he jumped off the ship pretty quickly after that. <laughs> Exactly. It, it definitely, we would have to forfeit the shape, um, but still, you're. It's regardless. Any way that you crack that one up, it's going to cost more. And so, yeah, yeah, I get it. But um, I think uh, let's see. It's five fifteen, uh, almost. Jackie, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know we were kind of slated to go till five, but let me just say first and foremost. Thank you for uh, for coming on and chatting with us today. You're always a super fun guest, and um, obviously you're a you know whether you want to admit it or not, you're a pretty big name in the you know the bourbon game, and I really appreciate you and give my utmost congratulations, my sincere congratulations to you for this achievement right here. Your signature is on a bottle, whether you think it's a big deal or not. I really think it's a big deal. You've kind of cemented your legacy and and. Um, and, uh, and and what you're doing at Old Forester. I'm really looking forward to the 117 series and what you have coming down the path based on the reaction of some of our ideas. So uh, I just want to say thanks again. And this is an absolutely delicious bourbon. If anyone in Kentucky uh, you know, is lucky enough to grab this, please do and please enjoy it and sit down with your friends and share it. Very well said. And thank you so much. You're always so much fun to talk to. I am sure we are going to be drinking all kinds of fun new stuff in the near future. So let's just say that. All right. Well, I'll keep my mailbox open and uh, right. the live stream open for you whenever you want to come back on and we could talk. We could <laughs> okay. talk about this stuff all day. So uh, congrats awesome. again, Jackie. Uh, thanks for coming on. Um, and what can I say? It's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share with. So cheers. Uh, happy birthday to all of you out there, especially uh, my buddy Cheech. And uh, thank you again, Jackie, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Happy birthday, Cheech. <laughs> Cheers, guys.